Welcome to another edition of Evil Deeds An R.E.W. Production On a quiet spring night in Kansas City's historical park district in 1988, a man wearing nothing more than a dog collar leaped from a second-story window. The home was the home of Robert Berdella. The man ran to a nearby house where he called police. Police secured a search warrant that would eventually lead to the discovery of a house of horrors. While searching the home, they discovered a human skull and vertebrae, marked from where it had been cut with a saw. In the backyard, they discovered other human remains as well as large blood-stained barrels. The contents revealed two more bodies and a collection of Polaroid pictures showing two men being sexually assaulted. They also showed the men being tortured. The House at 4315 Charlotte Street would be known as the home of the Kansas City Butcher. He was considered to be one of the most evil serial killers in history. Born on January 31, 1949, in Ohio, no one would have ever expected him to become a serial killer. He grew up in a very religious home with his family in the early 50s. While he was considered an awkward kid, being nearsighted and having a speech impediment, he for the most part, seemed to fit in with his other classmates. He was considered a bit of a loner and at times and would be bullied by older kids in the neighborhood. No one, however, bullied him more than his father. In his mid-teens, Berdella started to be more brazen around people. He also had come to terms with the fact that he was gay. After graduating high school in 1967, Berdella attended the City Art Institute. Though he did display some artistic talent, he would eventually get caught up in drug use. He then started displaying very odd behavior that would lead to him to torturing and killing animals. This caused the administration to expel him from the, the Institute. Throughout the 70s and 80s, Robert Berdella spent much of his time with male prostitutes, drug addicts, and criminals. It would be in 1984 that the butcher would claim his first victim, a 19-year-old named Jerry Howell. Howell was an acquaintance of Berdella from some past art dealings. He offered Howell a ride home, but that ride would only end up leading Howell to the House of Horrors. There he was tied up, violated, and tortured to death. Berdella then hung him upside down and cut his major arteries to drain his blood. He then dismembered the body. His next victim would be a drifter by the name of Robert Sheldon. He too would be tortured to death. His torture consisted of having his hands tied with piano wire in an attempt to cut of his circulation. Berdella then put drain cleaner in his eyes and filled his ears with caulk. He was then dissected. His next victim would also be tortured using electrical shocks and hypodermic needles placed in his back. Another one of victims, named James Ferris, would be tied to a bed where Berdella shocked him with 7,000 volts to his genitals. He did this until his victim died. A year later, Berdella would find his next victim, Todd Stoops. Stoops was eventually tied up as Berdella tried to make Stoop his sex slave. When this didn't work out, Berdella shocked Stoops and injected drain cleaner into his larynx in an attempt to make him mute. Stoop would eventually die from blood loss. In 1987, Berdella found his next victim, Larry Wayne Pearson. 
He was drugged and tied up as Berdella tortured him by electrical shocks. He also broke his hands with a metal bar so he couldn't defend himself in any way. After six weeks of being tortured and raped, Pearson finally bit Berdella's penis during a forced act of Filadio. Berdella then beat him to death. His last victim would be 22-year-old Christopher Bryson. Bryson eventually gained Berdella's trust and convinced him to tie his hands in the front. He would eventually find a box of matches and would burn through his ropes where he made a dramatic escape. The police would arrest Berdella and charge him with six murders. They would discover his journal where he described his heinous crimes in detail. Berdella accepted a deal where he pleaded guilty and revealed everything about his vile murders in exchange for life without parole. This also took the death penalty possibility away. Berdella would eventually die in prison on October 8, 1992, at the age of 43. The Kansas City Butcher would go down in history as one of the most horrific serial killers in modern history.